Hello and welcome once again to the Digital Painter Vidcast. My name is Terry Dana Chikimiak II and I am the Digital Painter and I bring to you videos that deal with digital painting, digital paint programs, and tutorials on general drawing skills. This week, well, it's been a while since I've been here, so I just want to say hi to everybody. I know it's been a couple weeks, there have been some changes with the website, changes with how I'm running things, and so I haven't quite had the time to get my videos done, but uh, getting back in the swing of things, which is great news. This week we're actually going to be looking at an extension for Photoshop, which is interesting. This is the first extension that I've ever purchased. Now I've purchased brushes for Photoshop and purchased multiple different digital paint programs, but I had not uh, in a while, or not ever, purchased an extension for Photoshop. So we're going to be taking a look at that in a minute. Before I go any further, though, I'm going to employ you, implore you, because I can't talk, to check out www.thedigitalpainter.com to see all my past videos, blogs, and podcasts. And I'm also going to ask you, if you, if you find what I do here uh, something that you enjoy and something that uh, has helped you out in some way uh, and, and you wish to support uh, the creations that I create, uh, go ahead and stop by patreon.com slash the digital painter and would love your support there. I've uh, essentially taken off the paid membership on my website and I'm moving, uh, moving that to Patreon because Really, I want to do more art and less sitting there behind the computer trying to make sure the website is working how I want it to. So I've simplified the website, and I'm making this a little more enjoyable for me. And hopefully, I'm going to you know do things like stream a little more often and things like that. So, all right, enough with the chit-chat. Let's get to where the reason you're here, which is something cool with this. So we'll hit a button, if I can find a mouse. There we go. Welcome to Photoshop. I'm going to move my microphone over here. There we go. And um, all right. Well, it's Photoshop. Nothing spe spectacularly interesting except for this right up here, which is the magic picker. Uh, now you see this is a regular color picker. Uh, it's okay. It works all right, and uh, but I've gotten used to some of the other programs where I can pick my colors a little more intuitively, and that's where Magic Picker comes in. Magic Picker is, again, a pay-for extension. It's not real expensive. It was $19. Uh, again, if Photoshop's the only thing you use, then it's a good way to go because, you know, 19 bucks for what I'm about to show you is pretty fantastic. But, uh, you know, if you use multiple other art programs, you may not need it because other art programs have this already built into it. I don't know why Photoshop hasn't. Maybe someday they will, but we'll see. All right, so the first thing you'll notice, we have our square, and I love this. So if you look at the, the regular one, up here you've got your, your hue up here. You've got your saturation in the middle, and then here you've got your... Um, your uh, value, your tint and shade. So adding black to this end uh, and going to the color at this end. HSB, wonderful. Uh, but when I'm choosing colors, what ends up happening is I, you know, I come down here and choose a color. Then I've got to move a slider to get it exactly where I, I'm not a big fan of that. Magic Picker has what I like a lot more. In fact, this is something, uh, if you've seen my Procreate, my updated Procreate videos, Procreate has this type of color picker, and I love it, adore it, really. And what we have here is we have a color wheel on the outside. This is going to be your hue. You know, you choose your color, spin around. Whoop. So here we've got kind of red going red, right, reddish orange in that area right there. Uh, in the middle, you can actually change this. I have it as a diamond. And when in the diamond shape, you have your most saturated in this area. Up top, you have white, bottom black, and over here is your neutral gray. So it's something that I actually teach painting in my scene shop painting class. You know, you start with, let me turn that lock off. There we go. You start with your red. And then if you add black, oops, well, I don't want to change the wheel. If you add black, you're shading your color. If you add white, you're tinting your color. And if you add gray, 
you're toning your color. Boom. Okay. Uh, but you can change these around. Let me get to the first one. This is the triangle. Again, same sort of thing, except rather than having a diamond, you know, you come in down here for shading, coming up this way for tinting, and then going straight across for toning. The next one is a square. I'm not a fan of the square. Again, same sort of thing, but you've got black all across the bottom. This is not the way I like to do it. And then you go to your diamond, and then this this is, yeah, let's not look at that. <laughs> um, it's, it's another way of doing it and not what I'm going to talk about because it's irrelevant to me. What I like is this one. I love the diamond or the triangle. Those are the two that I use. Those are the two that I'm going to talk about. Now you notice this ring on the outside actually has several colors here. Well, what's interesting is this is your color wheel, right? So you've got, uh, you've got your blue here in this area. You've got your, let's go, let's go full saturated in the, because we've got, oh, there we go. Okay. So we've got, I'm going to use this, we got, there we go, yellow, you've got your blue, and you've got your red as your primaries, then you have your green, you have your orange, and you have your purple as your secondaries. And I think that is really, really lovely, uh, a lovely way to do this, uh, and, you know, it gives you an idea of the color wheel, anybody who's just starting out, um, you know, for example, children who might use Photoshop as a learning tool. I, trust me, uh, my daughter loves playing on this from time to time. It gives you that color wheel right on the outside. You can actually turn that off, and that's this button down here, and it goes back to just regular. I like having it on. I think it's kind of cool. But then again, I'm kind of a weirdo like that. Okay. Other things, you can actually switch to the old style like what we have very similar to here. You choose your color on the side and then you can pull through. I like this version better. You can reduce your menu there. Let me go back to default there. Um, over here, this is how I was changing. You can see I just keep clicking through until I get to the one. Down here, you turn off again. You turn off that color wheel, bring it back. And then here are two really interesting things. The first one is this here. Let's say you're working in red, right there. And you wanna be able to use, let's go with analogous. So now you see, if I take, and I'm gonna lay down a little paint in the red, but then I can hit this, oops, Oh, okay. There we go. I can choose that color. And I can choose that color. And all three of these are analogous. I'm, not, I'm saying that wrong. I, I'm, they're to the left and to the right of your first color. <laughs> So you can see here on the color wheel, you've got the orange to the, well, to the top side and purple to the bottom side of the red. And so it's a nice color combination. One of the things you can do is actually, if you bring this down to here, let's go back there, you can actually get it in a tone. So if we do, let's choose our red first, choose our orange second, Choose our purple third. You've got, again, a toned variation of the original, but you can also do, for example, compliments. So, you know, Christmas colors are red and green. Let's grab our red. Then we'll grab our green. And we have our Christmas colors. Some of the other settings are triad. That's a triangle. You've got your tetrad, which is... So let's pick, let's pick colors we haven't done yet. Turn this layer off. 
and we've got our main color, which is this. And on the same side, we have this. And then directly opposite, we have this. And this, so we have four, oops, didn't get the last one. I did get the last one, that one. Didn't choose it though, huh? Uh, let's do this. Oh, there we go. It did choose it. Okay. And then our other two colors, which are bump and bump. Okay, so we get four colors that go really well together. Again, that's Tetrad. And then you have this one, Ac Analogic. So things you can play with, right? Allows you to pull colors that work well together. Okay, it's something I actually teach in my design principles class. You know, those different type of color com combinations. If you go to websites and things, you can usually find some sort of uh, variation of those. So the other cool thing here is this little lock symbol. And it's a gamut lock. So let me go back and we're just going to go default. I'm going to pick a color and lock right there. And I'm going to lay that down. Now I'm going to grab that and start to spin. Notice that my lock is moving around. We'll get that color and maybe this color. Okay. So what this does, and I did a little looking on here, right? I'm going to pull over the website so you can see. This is the website um, where you color lock. K, uh, no, that's K-Lock. Tone lock, I'm sorry. It keeps colors in the same gamma, okay? So that means they're the same um, tone for the colors, right? Similar tones across. This is nice when you're trying to figure out it, or, or if you want colors that specifically work together in the same uh, tonal area, uh, you know, if you were, if that was unlocked and you had something like this with something like this, they're very different. Oh man, those colors are nasty together. Uh, very different in their tonal qualities. But if we were to take and undo that second one and grab that color there, and then we click our lock, now we can find something that's going to go with it. Not much is going to go with that because that is one of the brighter colors on our scale. So what we would need to do is pull that out here. Let's put that color here and then rotate around. And we could use something like this and those two colors actually go pretty well together you still have your sliders down at the bottom as you can see you still have you know the ability to you could actually type in if you know the cmyk or know the rgb you can actually lock your k2 um, so this is much more uh, in depth I guess is the best way to put it, than the regular color picker here, okay? And I like it so much better. The ability to just kind of move around. I'm going to unlock that. Move around and play with it. I still have my sliders down here if I really want to put my sliders down uh, and use that as a way of doing it. Um, obviously, you can actually switch these back and forth, you know, so just like the regular picker, there's a lot of things that are the same. So don't let it, you know, don't let it go feel like it's way too much. You can switch to RGB mode if you really wanted to. There are some settings in here. RGB, HSV, red up, show 12 colors. You know, some simple settings, nothing major. Um, but yeah, it's just like anything else. So that is it for this week. Just wanted to show you the magic picker. Again, if it's something that you're looking at uh, or something that you'd like to look at, um, 
the website there is anastasy.com. You can see it right there, A-N-A-S-T-A-S-I-Y. There is a limited trial version. It doesn't have everything, um, such as, you know, limiting your temperature control. It doesn't have that. Um, it doesn't have a couple other things. Unfortunately, no K-Lock. Uh, no, or not as many shades of brightness and saturation. But it'll give you a sense of what it is like. So I definitely would say check it out. Uh, the website itself says that it's used by Disney, Marvel, Epic Games, and DreamWorks. Uh, you know, take that as face value. I think uh, I'm going to like it. I know I'm going to like it more than what is already in there because I started playing with it earlier and I was like, oh, this is stunning. I have to make a video. All right. That's it for this week on the Digital Painter Vidcast. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at uh, terry.jukimiak at thedigitalpainter.com and always willing to answer questions. Thank you guys so much for your support. Again, if you're a Patreon member, got lots of things lined up. Thank you so much for your support uh, there. Thank you for the emails and the kind words that I've re received over the past month as I, as I got through my sicknesses and whatnot. So, all right, take care and uh, keep on painting.